It's no secret that Madam Web is a terrible movie. In fact, this film is not your average everyday trash. Madam Web is advanced trash. But aside from obvious things like cringy dialogue, bad audio dubbing, and confusing editing, I wanted to take a look at some more subtle issues that affect the film's story in a more profound way, and how we can learn from its mistakes to ensure that we make and consume better content in the future. As always, I'm going to be breaking my analysis up into a few categories, proper establishment and definition. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps me out. Also, just the heads up guys, my mom watches my videos and she actually liked Madam Web, so I actually told her I was going to make this video. Mom, if you're watching, sorry, but I'm about to rip into this film. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the analysis. When I say proper establishment, I obviously don't mean establishment like a business or restaurant. I mean establishment establishing information within your story. Think of this category almost like setup and payoff. The better the setup for a moment is, the better the payoff will be. One of the biggest problems I had with this film was that it tried to have these grand, big emotional payoffs, but the setup was laughably bad, and that made the payoff fall completely flat. To get a sense of what I mean, let's take a look at some examples from the movie. In the beginning of the third act, Cassie Webb goes into this special cave pool and can somehow see her mom in the past before she was even born. That's another issue that we'll get into in the next category, but for now, let's focus on what Cassie sees. She watches her mother talking with the doctor about her baby's diagnosis, how basically Cassie had some sort of rare defect and would not live a long life once she was born. It was for this reason that her mom decided to journey out to the Amazon while heavily pregnant to find the special spider that could help heal diseases. It was in order to save her baby's life. This is an emotional moment for Cassie a huge revelation that brings her to tears because she always blamed her mom for unnecessarily risking her health in the jungle while she was pregnant, and for that reason, blamed her mom for not being present in her life. This is great, emotional, powerful material to work with here. Our protagonist finally realizes that her mom did actually love her, and now she is extremely remorseful for how she wrongly blamed her mother for not being there or caring about her. On its own, this payoff is monumentally powerful, but Let's look at how this moment was set up. Cassie talks with Ben about how her mom cared about dumb spiders more than her, nonchalantly tells the other girls at the baby shower that her mom died in the rainforest, and mentions that she was in foster care to the three teenage girls she's protecting. Do you notice a problem here? If you've been watching the channel long enough, you should already know what I'm about to say right now. All of the setup for this extremely important and weighty character moment is conveyed solely through dialogue. We never see any of it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, one of the fundamental principles of telling a good story in film is to show, not tell. Especially when you are setting up one of the biggest payoffs in your entire movie. Film is a primarily visual medium, and oftentimes it is the image of what is on screen that most powerfully moves us and is retained in our minds when we reflect back on a feature. Therefore, it is always better to show important development like this rather than to leave it all up to dialogue, where we the audience have no visual reinforcement of the setup. Show us Cassie as a child going through the foster care system. Show us crying herself to sleep one night, terribly missing her mother and wondering why her mother left her. Give us some sort of visual marker so we can actually see the elements of your setup rather than just hearing about it through dialogue. That way, if we visually see how the absence of her mother affected Cassie as a child, that image of a young girl experiencing sorrow and abandonment is far more powerful powerful of a setup and feels like it carries the appropriate weight for a reveal such as Cassie finding out that her mom didn't actually abandon her. The way the film is currently constructed, however, the payoff feels unearned and over the top because the setup was so non-existent and only conveyed through dialogue. And although this is perhaps one of the biggest examples, it is by no means the only time in the film where a payoff falls flat due to a lackluster setup. Another example is Ezekiel Sims' backstory and motivation for his actions in the film. We get one throwaway line from him right before he shoots Cassie's mother where he tells her he doesn't care about helping other people because no one ever helped his family when they were starving, but because it is only told to us and we never see it, the film misses the chance to add so much more depth to his character. Show us his family like dying from starvation because no one would help them, and that trauma then triggers his villain or 
origin story. That's deep material to work with, but you sap all of the power and impact out of it when you simply tell the audience about it and don't show it. The same basic idea applies for the backstory and family lives of the three girls that Cassie has to protect. Each one has some sort of family drama, like absent parents, a deported father, and step-parents who don't want them, but practically all of this important character development is conveyed through, you guessed it, dialogue. So the payoff when all of these girls find a new sort of surrogate family with each other feels much less impactful than it should feel. And that really is one of the biggest issues with Madame Web. It has deep and emotional material to work with, but the setup for these big emotional moments is cheap and almost completely conveyed through dialogue, violating the film principle of show, don't tell. This next category of definition is one that is extremely important when making a superhero film or any movie that has fictional elements. A good comparison to help understand this concept is to think of definition in film sort of like explaining the rules of a new sport to your friend who is watching a game with you for the first time. The sport could be the most exciting thing ever, with people running all over the place and athletes competing hard against each other, but your friend will not be able to properly follow the excitement because they don't understand what is going on. Who's winning? How do you score points? Why was there a penalty on that play? In order for your friend to have a true appreciation for what they are watching and feel a part of the action, you need to explain the basic rules of the game. In the same way, an audience doesn't fully understand the new world of your story, with supernatural elements like the power they see into the future, and therefore cannot fully appreciate the story you are trying to tell without definition. There needs to be established rules and limitations for them to feel like they have a basic understanding of this fictional world that they are watching, in order to be able to follow along with the actions happening on screen. There can be an element of mystery to the superpowers in your film, but there also has to be some sort of definition of the basics. Unfortunately, Madame Web does not follow this principle of definition, and it leads to a lot of confusion and ambiguity in regards to what her powers are exactly, and when and when can't she use them. Cassie goes her whole life without experiencing her powers until she has a near-death experience. After that, they sort of sporadically appear in her life at random times, where she'll receive visions of events that are going to happen in the near future. But it all feels jumbled and messy because we never get an explanation as to why her powers were never unlocked until she almost died, or why she can see into the future on certain occasions, but not others. The lack of definition of Cassie's powers in this instance comes across more as lazy, since they only appear to affect the narrative when the movie needs them to happen in order to progress the plot. It almost feels like the writers were lazy and just had Cassie's powers randomly happen when the story needed them to happen, instead of coming up with a logical or rational pattern that they follow and basing the story around that pattern. Sure, the second option I listed takes more time and effort to make it work, but it feels so much more rewarding and has much more clarity for the audience than the first option, which feels like an ill-defined, lazy cop-out plot device just to make the story work. We don't even need to understand Cassie's powers right away, but at some point in the story, if the audience is going to have a logical thread that they can follow, then there needs to be some sort of explanation given as to how the basics of Cassie's future seeing abilities work. Maybe have the spider jungle guy explain it to her, or have him give an explanation to her mother, maybe have Cassie figure out a pattern. Whenever she's about to undergo a stressful event, she sees into the future, or something along those lines. You have to give the audience something to hold on to and to be able to follow, because otherwise, the powers in your story just become confusing and messy, and the audience stops caring because they have no idea what's going on. Those were just two of the many issues I noticed with Madame Web. I feel like even the average moviegoer could pick up on all the obvious flaws in this film, like the bad acting and weak writing, but I wanted to provide a few examples of some more complex and deep flaws that the movie had and give some feedback on how these issues could have been resolved with just slight revisions to the story. Madame Web was honestly, in my opinion, the worst movie of the year so far, so I hope all of you out there learned what not to do when making a movie, and if you did feel like you learned something, then I would really appreciate it if you left a like
like on this video and subscribe. It really does help me out. Mom, I hope I was able to properly explain just some of the huge problems that existed in this film. Thanks for always watching my videos and I love you. Okay, that's pretty much it. I hope you decide to check out some of my other movie reviews, character studies, and scene breakdowns. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll definitely love those too. And I'll catch you all on the next one. Have a great day.